Today we're at the Rocket Garden, which is near the production site for the Starbase here. And as you can see behind me, they have a number of starships over at the Rocket Garden and including a booster. Now the one that you see right behind me is Ship 26. This is the next generation and one of the unique things as you can tell is it does not have any thermal tiles nor does it have any of the flaps on it. So there's a lot of speculation about what this may be. It could be a tanker test variant and that would be to help uh, test out the idea of orbital refueling, which will be a necessary uh, skill and capability to be able to get the Starship and then through the NASA uh, Artemis and the uh, Human Landing System program to the uh, moon. Uh, it's necessary to be able to prove and demonstrate the ability to do in-flight orbital refueling. And the basic idea is that uh, if that was a capability that was operational, the Starship would launch, it would enter an orbit, it would rendezvous with the orbiting uh, tanker, fill up, and then from there be able to go to the moon and then do the landing and the other missions uh, that are scheduled for the moon program that uh, NASA has uh, uh, put on contract SpaceX to do that. Now, you can also see some of the other ships, some of the older ships here. I believe this is ship 20, and nearby is also ship uh, our SN15, and that was the first one that successfully did the launch, flip maneuver, and also the landing. The booster behind me is one of the early test boosters, and it's sitting over here. I don't know if it's gonna be uh, recycled at some time or if there's some other plans for it. But also, while we're here, I want to just give you a view around this site and uh, what you might see if you were to be here, uh, here at uh, Starbase. You are able to come down this road, it's Remedius Avenue, and you can walk right up to this fence that's uh, separating this road and the Starship uh, uh, prototypes. You can see the test tank on the left of the screen, and they usually use these for testing of materials or strength or maybe some different configurations that they plan on using in the future for Starship. You can also see SN or the ship uh, 26 here. As I mentioned, no grid fins. It's on a unique and new platform that allows them to install the Raptor engines here in the Rocket Garden rather than over at the high bay. You can also see the uh, ship in the background behind the uh, crane. That is uh, SN15, the one that successfully did the launch and landing. And here you can see, I believe this is a ship uh, 20 uh, with all of the uh, tiles on it. And it's just sitting over here in the rocket garden waiting for its future. I'm not sure if it's gonna be recycled or maybe used as a static display somewhere or if there's any other purposes that SpaceX may have. Now, as we continue to turn uh, towards the facility, you can see this uh, open area. This is called Olympus Mons, and it is a uh, location that used to have some of the uh, Airstream trailers that SpaceX employees use when they are staying here. All of those have been relocated to a different portion of Starbase and uh, uh, kind of con consolidating all of that in that housing unit. Now, one of the things that you can see directly ahead as I zoom in is some of the foundation work that's going on for probably a new high bay or a mega bay. On the ground, you can see the form work and some of the rebar work that is going on uh, preparing for concrete. This will be the main slab, a pretty reinforced slab that will support the new building. And as we continue to look around, you can see uh, some other interesting uh, developments here, specifically uh, next to that uh, construction site, the Mega Bay. And this was built about a year ago and it uh, added a lot of capacity to the construction of the Starship and the boosters. This is tall enough that they tend to build the boosters and do the final stacking and welding in this particular building. And at the top, you can see that it is still under construction to some degree as they work on the top. And they've also been doing uh, some installation of 
some HVAC ducting to improve some of the airflow into this particular building. As I continue to uh, pan to the right, you can see the original high bay, and this was uh, the tallest structure at one time here at uh, Starbase until they built the mega bay. And at the very top, you can see that glassed in closure. I believe that's a bar and uh, a gathering location for people coming to visit here at uh, Starbase, also for Star uh, uh, SpaceX employees. And this building is also used to stack and uh, configure the Starships. Right now, there's actually at least two Starships inside this building. The opening is on the side away, facing away from where we're at. Now, this building here amongst the palm trees looks like a uh, residential section, but I've been told that it's actually a restaurant for SpaceX employees. And as you can see, there's a, kind of a patio and some chairs for dining on the outside. And I don't know, but there may be some dining on the inside as well. So uh, pretty neat to see. It looks like they're you know, reusing a old building that was here before Starbase uh, was constructed. As we look across Remedios Avenue, you can see this new tent. I believe this is being used for logistics now. Um, this whole yard continues to be uh, reconfigured and uh, features added over time. And recently this tent was completed to add that uh, logistics capability. And as we continue to pan across this uh, material staging location, we can see more tanks. Uh, these are liquid nitrogen tanks. And you can see that top, uh, that tower on the right hand side. Now that is used to actually uh, precipitate out the nitrogen, oxygen, and even argon from the atmosphere. So they have on-site capability for those gases here at Starbase. Now for the methane, those are trucked in and it comes from off-site. But other than that, they have a lot of capability for the commodities used for the Starship and hopefully for the uh, upcoming launch in the near future. And as we turn back towards the uh, rocket garden again, you can again see the uh, test tank, ship 26 SN15, and what I think is again ship 20, uh, waiting for their future. So there you have it. It's a quick tour around this section of the production site and where the rocket garden is. As I mentioned, the access here that SpaceX grants is really remarkable. You can walk down this road, you can get really close to the ships and get a good feel for the size and the scale that's involved with the Starship program. I hope that you get a chance to come out here soon. Uh, at some point in the future, this access may eventually go away, so make sure you uh, take advantage of it as long as you can. So I hope you like this tour and the information that I talked about and just a brief view of this part of Starbase. As always, thank you very much for your support and for watching. Have a great day.